Hello, it's Monday morning, um, and I hope it's relaxing painting. It's doing a bunch of landscaping work again outside over the last few days, and uh, a little bit achy. Um, I decided what I was going to paint today was the shark. Where I'm not sure we'll ever see this shark in our D and D stream because my character is definitely not planning to get into water that's deep enough for this kind of shark to be in. So, you know, it's, uh, uh I don't know, but it's a minifig kind of, it's a big minifig. This is much larger than, than the badger. I painted the badger, get rid of this. Painted the badger last week, and it came out okay. I think the saxophone looks pretty good. I like the hat. The hat the hat is especially decent, right? Oh, see, so you can see this is a very large shark. Um, this shark could just look at that just slurp slurp down the badger, probably saxophone and all. Um, it might regurgitate the saxophone. I don't know. It might just have to pass through. But anyway, the shark is large, which, um, boy, you know, if I remember that, I could do that. I, you know, that's, that's how you attack things, right? You go, attack, 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 attack. I'm getting you. Dum, 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 dum. It's not not uh, copyrighted at all, so I can do that, I'm sure. Dump, 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 dump. What was that? That was almost like special effects, right? Uh, yeah, I'm procrastinating today. So the shark in, in general, you would say, this is pretty easy to paint. You know, it's gray, right? Uh, maybe a red mouth, some white teeth. It's got little eyeballs. Those could either be demon eyeballs. They could be red or they could be black. And it's got some nostrils. There's a fair amount of detail. Little gill slits. But, you know, not nearly as much or as small as the badger was. Or even uh, the, the dragon kin I'd been painting earlier. Almost. Should we do it again? If I keep doing it over and over again, then I don't have to paint. Can't have enough of that. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try some shading. I don't. I'm not really terribly good at it. But I'm gonna paint paint this almost all gray. Okay except for the under bit here, which is going to be kind of a tan color because sharks do that and they kind of fade in. I'm going to try to blur the edge a little bit, okay, to make it look not unnatural. And then I'm going to use the dark gray wash. And what I'm going to attempt to do is make the top of the shark darker and then kind of fade out to a lighter gray so just kind of dark on the top and then probably the tip of the fin i'll make it a black tip fin um yeah so i'm going to try that so in, in the and then with the water we got these pearlescent paints and it's sort of splashing up so i'll be able to paint this blue and then use the white pearlescent okay use the white pearlescent too highlight all the ripples and waves and things. And, you know, this is, this took a lot of rosin on the rosin printer. It's a pretty substantial and heavy print. So I hope I don't mess it up too much, but knowing, knowing that it's not going to appear likely on our D and D stream, because again, my character doesn't want to go into water deep enough for this. So, you can't run into it if you're not in the water. 
At least that's my understanding. Ooh, unless this is dirt, maybe this isn't water. Maybe this is like sand or uh, loose soil, maybe even rock. And this is a shark that comes up through through the earth, the land shark. Okay. Some of you might remember that from old Saturday Night Lives. I don't, I don't think that that's uh, trademarked or copyrighted to say land shark. But anyway, yeah, so I'm going to paint, put some paint on a shark today. But first, I must do the flip. And this has become kind of my favorite flipping thing because it's light and it, you can tell one side from the other. And um, it's usually lands kind of where I want it. Although the last time I did this, it ended up on the floor. Who had put up uh, four flips? Do, I'll do six flips. There we go. So we got the flips done. Um, I'm going to start with the inside of the mouth. Okay. And in doing so, I'll be getting paint kind of around the edges and onto the teeth. I'll be painting the teeth probably later. I might do those maybe even kind of last among the major things. And I'll highlight the gill slits later too. But um, probably the inside of the mouth. And then I'm going to do the underside and then do a whole lot of gray painting. And then the trick with the gray painting is to get it uniform uh, to be shaded in later and then to get the edge just a little bit, a little bit um, uneven so it doesn't. Look, doesn't look too unnatural. It looks like there's kind of a nice line here, kind of a ridge there where one color stops and the other one starts. It goes up and then around the jaw, down. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, only used up like 10 minutes so far. Um, I've always, the scarlet red always works for like insides of mouths and things like that. It's kind of a nice dark red, but not as dark as the black red, which I'm going to be using for the gill slits. This is an old bottle. There's hardly any paint left in here. We'll see if there's enough to be able to do the inside of it. Is the music running? Yeah, the music is running. At least that's what the uh, timer says here. Are you not hearing it? Yeah, it's been running now for uh, some time, and it looks like it's looping, too. Well, you know, it could be a land shark. I'm going to paint it shark colors, gray and, and sand, um, and then have to decide. I'll have to decide. I was going to just paint water, you know, because I've got these pearlescent paints and I can paint it blue and white. And that would be watery. But we'll take a vote. Take a vote among all two of you so far who are on chat you who are on chat um, about whether you want it to be a land shark. I would prefer it not to be a land shark because it's really big if you look at it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's very, very large compared to our, our characters. Um, and if it were an ocean shark, then one could avoid it by not going into the ocean. Hmm. Oh, wow. I guess it is Landris Maximus of Sharkandia now, because you redeemed 
you redeem naming tokens. Uh, okay, well, I guess, I guess we're not safe. I guess this is going to be a land shark. And somebody needs to write that down so that if it ever appears on our D&D &D stream, we know what the name is. I could actually write that down. Um, one good reason to write that down would be that I can, I can waste more time by finding uh, something to write on and something with which to write. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some painting done first because this is supposed to be relaxing painting. Relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. So I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth here. This is a very cavernous mouth. <laughs> it could probably fit like two nines in here. That would be an 18, wouldn't it? Ooh, arithmetic day. Yeah. Little did Sturm Grimmy know that by making the sea safe, by banishing this, it came up on land, becoming yet even more dangerous. doing this with my glasses on, which means that I'm probably going to have to do touch-up on the inside of the mouth later when the same thing is going to be true of the shark body. I find when painting large areas like this, I mean, relatively large compared to most of the minifigs that I do, that there are sometimes spots that are left unpainted. And then you know, deciding where the inside of the mouth ends and the outside starts. That's always a thing. But as this dries, sometimes um, you can get some, just some spots where the paint shrinks and then pulls away from itself. You get these little dots where the, the uh, primer shows through. Okay, well, there. This is where I should probably just leave it for somebody who's more talented than me. And just say, look, I painted the inside of the mouth and I didn't slop on the teeth too terribly much, but just enough so that you know it was me. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think between the teeth there, like that. Did I show better? Some red between the teeth. Paint this a little too far out. It's because then when I paint the gray and the beige, I can decide where to have the dividing line. Okay, well, that was good. Now I've got red paint. Did I keep that on camera? You know, sometimes when you know, you're doing stuff like this, when it's 
really easy to do, just kind of muttering about nothing in particular. It gets off camera. Now I can do this, and it's. I did this before, so it's going to be even more frightening now because of the mouth being all red. Dun, 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 dun. Carrier. I'm going to get, I'm going to get to, um, Holding on to the red paint uh, really, really tightly here to come clean. This is good. So what happened was the shark attack. Watch here. Mine is here. We'll have it attack them. them. Dum, 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 dum. Is that, you know, is that still within demographics of under seven and over 70? I think you can do, you can do that. You can do like blood splatting. We've got a, we've got a, what, a tableau? Yeah. It's enough. Enough of that. <clears throat> Use the same brush for the underside here, I think. Why not? And then I need to paint around the teeth. I'll take my glasses off so I can see close up for that. Um here we go. I'll use this pen. That's a long name, Landris. Might as well put it on camera. Huh? I'll just do that. There we go. Landris Maximus. Now that's bought and paid for. So if you get if you get little tokens like that, and some of you probably do, you probably don't even know you've got them. You've got currency that it's like almost like cryptocurrency, right? In that it's not real. But if I think there are viewer points or, or something like that, that if you've got them, you can cash them in to do that. You can redeem them for hydration, which is kind of what I'm doing. Um, but you can also redeem them to name something. And medicinal, medicinal shy guy uh, redeemed 10,000 of whatever those tokens are. Uh, to name this Landris Maximus of Sharkandia. And now it's going to be a land shark. So this down here is going to be like dirt and grass and stuff. It'll be, that'll be interesting. Let's see, I'm going to use this color, the one that's in this bottle, to paint underneath.
So who is the music on your end now? Can you hear it? Because the counter is still counting, saying that the music is playing. Still not there, huh? Have to get tech support in again because if you know it, the software might be lying to me it might be saying everything is is working perfectly fine and the music is playing and and it's not really that can happen so this is bone white bone white has been featured on many things that are not bones. Uh, this is the color that I've been using for escape hatches and um, torpedo racks on the torpedoes on the submarine. That's way too much, like five times more than I need. paint up a little further than I will that this color will be at down to it with the gray thick this, this really I think it it's fairly new bottle but I'm going to put a little thinner in it. It's um, two coats. It's weird. Sometimes when uh, paint thickens up, I've noticed this when it when the solvent has even, when the there's too little solvent in it. It um, it doesn't cover very evenly. It's just sort of gummy. That didn't cover well at all. And we'll definitely need a second coat. And if it dries, if it dries on the model quickly enough, I might be able to get the second coat out of out of that without having to squeeze out and waste more paint. It's the right color for this. Yeah. I don't want to thin it too much. Just, and it becomes hard to use in a different direction. It is what's going to happen is it's going to be coming up from a grassy field. You're right, exactly that, shy guy. Uh, green grassy field. Okay, so I'm going to use like the uh, green wash on maybe a base color, and then this will be the dirt. It'll be shooting up out of the dirt, so this will all be brown around it. Because it is now definitely and officially, thanks to you, a land shark. Get the thinner here. Tools of the thinning trade. And um, take the top off. 
these little um, dropper things at the top, they, they pull off, or at least that's what they're supposed to do. I appreciate you checking, you know, watching when you can. Maybe the new president in your building can become a, a fan of um, Dyson Dungeons. If that person is a president, you know, they're probably doing okay. They could, they could actually... not only become like a follower, they could become not only a follower, but I bet they could afford to go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons, patreon.com slash dice and dungeons, and become a patron. Not only that, if the president became a patron, they could suggest, you know, they'd never order their staff to do this. It would only be voluntary, but they could suggest that, um, that their staff also go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. Now, of course, their staff wouldn't become, I'm going to send the stuff in the well also just to see how that goes. Um, they couldn't, you know, join at the same level probably as the president. But, um, yeah, the whole company then through the leadership the excellent and amazing leadership of the new president could become patrons of Dice and Dungeons by going to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons. And you don't even have to be, uh, you don't even have to work there where the new president is going to be one of our patrons. You can, anybody can do that. Anybody can go there and uh, support Dyson Dungeons by becoming a patron. And if you become a patron, you get, wow, that really shows up well, doesn't it? Yeah, you, um, you get access to all sorts of really cool things, like DM notes. Yep, our DM is publishing the notes from earlier episodes on um, our Patreon pages. Okay, Let's see if we can make this less scabby now by putting another code on. Thinning it was, is helpful. Stuff in the bottle. Needs even more thinning. <laughs> From the ground up, so to speak, because that's definitely ground now. Since this is a land shark. The second coat will probably be adequate. And that's what we go for adequately. Everything has to be done adequately. Okay. The next bit is to paint this whole top um, gray. That, that looks like that should be easy and relaxing. And then when I get to the boundary between the two colors, to try to make it just a little bit blurry. Just maybe dapple a little bit so that it doesn't look too uniform. It's going to require three coats, really. This 
doesn't bode well for the submarine where I'm using this. This color is going to be used in a lot of the machinery in the engine room of the submarine when I get to it sometime. I don't know, in 2024 at the rate I'm moving. Some danger I could finish this before the end of the stream today, or two more or less two, because um, I'm not dawdling not nearly enough, and there isn't that much detail, you know, like when I was painting the badger, there's tiny little dots of paint here and there, and then I had to put tiny little dots of the other color on to do touch up, and like the hat, the pink hat I think got touched up maybe five different times. And they're in here. But I am concerned at the viscosity of this paint. Always the danger when opening the top of this of knocking it over and spilling paint all over. And then I don't have to worry about thinning it because it's gone. That's either just right or too much. We'll find out on Wednesday. really appreciate that shy guy, you know, taking a chance at becoming unemployed by uh, sneaking peeks at relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons on their phone. Thank you so much for your support. And for uh, purchasing the name. I get to spread a whole lot of gray paint on the, on the shark here. The sighing day, sighing Monday. I'm using this gray. This gray is very close to the neutral gray that we use for our stone walls when we do dungeon tiles, but um, I haven't used it much before, so I'm going to try it on here. It's kind of, it's got a nice light gray. It gets darker, you know, like a lot of these do as it dries. This is this is flowing pretty well. This particular paint is behaving. Okay. Hmm. That's actually that's actually kind of nice when I just go across the top like that. It shows the gill slits well. I think having done that. 
I am, I'm going to paint the gill slits next and then come back with this paint and just brightly, lightly brush across and it gives it kind of a frilly effect. I wasn't expecting that. Let's see if I can duplicate it when I'm doing it for real. See? See how that works? I want that to be red underneath there. And that, that might look pretty good if I can actually pull it off. Trying to, as opposed to doing it by accident. Okay, so what I want to do here... Yeah, that kind of that kind of works. Just trying to soften the boundary. You know, by taking the gray and kind of dabbing it up into the into the beige color. Yeah, and that's that's fairly successful at what I was trying to achieve. Use this other smaller brush I was using before. I'm gonna have to squeeze out a little bit more paint. it up around the, the nose, the teeth here. You don't mind getting it on the teeth very terribly much, um, but that other brush doesn't let me get close enough to it to really make it work at all. These teeth will be painted instead of dead white, I mean white, white, white. I usually use ivory, which ends up looking white, but not kind of unnaturally bright. I mean, this, this is not an animal that uses uh, whatever those things are, white strips or something. The thing that... Uh, that they sell that you, you know, like ultraviolet light that you stick in your mouth and it's supposed to make your teeth white. That's not what the shark doesn't use that because it would. I mean, it would if it could, but they, um, I'm not sure it's intentional, you know, but they don't make them. Sharks, shark size. Okay, so there. That's not. That's not too bad. You know, when you look at it, it looks a little bit s sort of scabby, but. From a distance, it you know, it um, it's kind of a nice uh, 
you know, uneven transition between one color and the other. So let's uh, get these brushes clean. And then I'm going to paint the gilt slits. And by, by accident, I was discovering that if I took the brush and painted over the gills in that direction, that it, give it gave it kind of a real frilly kind of gill look. And I'll, I'm going to try to replicate that after I put the red on. And if it works, it'll look it'll look pretty uh, pretty okay. Yeah, okayness. I'm hoping, yeah, it's quarter to eleven. I'm hoping I don't finish this before the normal break time. Finish it just, you know, around break time, either before or after. Then I have to decide what I'm going to be painting next. I've got two other things I can paint. And I'm going to let it, I'm letting this dry a little bit before I paint the gills red because I don't want it to be messy. So I've got this demon toad. Okay, it looks pretty. Pretty mean, but I think it's probably actually really friendly. Um, and I was thinking, okay, just, you know, painted toad colors, grays and greens and things like that. But I'm actually thinking I might paint it like red and orange and yellow, like flamey. Okay. And even do the same thing with the spikes. Like this is like a flaming demon toad. Okay, and like the even, like this whole thing could be kind of red fading into orange underneath. I could use the speed paints on this to emphasize the uh, scaliness of the skin. And then the spikes could actually be fl little flames. Like kind of yellow with... Uh, red tips on it. I'm not sure I would use three colors like I do on the campfires, but I could do that. And I might even, could even use the speed paint red as a wash on it rather to make it look a little shinier or maybe even um, the pearlescent paint. And then I could have, you know, my I'm going to try doing that. I have no idea if it would work or not. Again, this used up a lot of rosin. This was, you know, not a, it's not a, an inexpensive thing at all. But I'm, I'm going to, if I get to this today, and it looks like I probably will, um, that's, that's actually what I'm going to try to do. And if it looks really terrible, well, uh, we can, as I keep saying, can either prime it over, you know, reprime it, or just toss it, or, or better yet, um, if it looks really terrible, then we can use it in our D and D stream. As a, oh look, here comes the appearance of a giant, very badly painted toad. Oh no, we we it would be really scary. It would very very scary. Um, okay, so I'm going to try this gill slit thing to see how it works. Um, the toad and the shark haven't met yet. The shark just emerged, just emerged as a land shark. Um, and the toad is nearby, but they haven't met. So I think... We can play that out a little bit later. If I get this moving along and it's looking okay, we can do as a preview. And it's like, <clears throat> what are you? I am a shark. Shouldn't you be in the water? I am magically transported onto land. Oh, can you breathe the air? I have been magically transformed into a land shark. Oh. That's really interesting. No, it's not interesting at all. 
It's just a way of wasting time instead of having someone paint me on relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Oh, really? Um, I bet when it comes my turn, they'll be able to waste even more time. That's quite possible. They're very good at wasting time. Yes, I I've, I've believe that would be true. Well, enjoy your time-wasting presence on land. We'll get back together and become friends because um, that, that seems to be the thing that will be happening. Okay, see you later after more time is wasted painting me. Okay, bye. There we go. Well, maybe it was like the silliest thing I've ever done on Dyson Dungeons. Relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. It has to be right up there. Um, fortunately, I don't really remember a lot of the things I do, you know. Relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. No, I mean on D&D &D on the stream, yeah. But I mean on relaxing painting. But that was that was fun. That was fun to do that. Thank you for the thank you for the idea, Ophala. So Ophala, if you're paying attention at all, is the music playing for you? Because the counter is counting, which tells me that it's supposed to be playing, but who says that the music isn't playing? Sometimes these paints, this, they get this buildup right around the nozzle like that. It's so weird. I'm not sure why. Sometimes, sometimes it's a huge thing, but there it was small. Okay, I'm going to um, do this without using a head magnifier. And what I'm going to be doing is putting this very dark red paint into the, the slits where the gills are. You know, doing it actually a little too much, okay? And what I'm going to be then doing is getting out the big brush and the gray paint again. And like I accidentally did before, I'm going to paint in this direction. And if it works like it did when I wasn't planning on it working, it will make them look like frilly gills which is exactly what they're supposed to be. We'll find out. Sometimes you can accidentally find a technique that gives you the effect that you want, and it turns out to be way easier to use than doing it the way you thought you were going to do it, which would be less easy to use. I am um, practicing being inarticulate today. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. So yeah, I'm gonna get the gray paint out with a big brush and see if those look like, see if they look gilly. And you can kind of see it with the dark. See how the the paint went over the, the primer there, and that that's exactly how it's supposed to look. If those were gills, so I'm gonna be almost dry brushing it on because. Well, you know, it's easier to put more paint on than it is to uh, take paint away. The really good dark red, it's um, it should be a good color for the gills if, if this all works. 
Okay, and then if I can get that to work, um, then these will be done. And I'm going to then either paint the teeth or start trying to shade it with the uh, with the dark gray wash. I might just do I might do the teeth first. Um, yes. It was a platonic greeting. It was kind of, I don't know, French, not a French kiss. That just sounds terrible. You know, the kind of side to side little kiss that people stereotypically who are French do. We might we might see this we might see a, a redo of the uh, the original encounter between frog and between toad and shark uh, later in the stream, depending on how uh, the shark painting comes along. You know, if these gills work out okay, if they end up looking pretty good, and if I can get the shading, just just so it's at least okay, then this could be done pretty quickly and it might not look too bad. Well, instead of wasting more time, I can probably paint the teeth while I'm waiting for this red paint to dry because the stuff around the mouth is dry by now. So we'll get the... Um, Ivory out and probably I might even put my head magnifier on for this so I can see what's going on. Streams have been known streams can sometimes just wander all over the place. Okay, streams have been known to just kind of meander, a meandering stream. Sometimes streams get in a real rush. You know, sometimes streams will just completely dry up. And then they're not a stream anymore. Then they're just a stream bed. If this if this became a stream bed, then it could be very relaxing. But Dyson Dungeons, it could just simply take a stream bed nap. And a stream bed. Sometimes streams babble. You know, then they're called babbling brooks, but they're really just a stream. Um, yeah, we we could do that. That would be probably disturbing. I don't know. It might not be any weirder than some of the cartoons in the '60s. Weird interspecies stuff going on in them all the time. I'm doing this. It helps to have a lens on it, really. The lenses have been not holding as well lately. There we go. So I'm using this to uh, paint the shark teeth so I can see up close. What can we do? We can count the teeth. Two. Two teeth. Mm 
am I doing this? I don't know. Just to, we haven't done number things in a while. This is where I should get distracted and lose count. Six. But I'm not, there isn't even anything to distract me right now because I can't look up at chat. Yeah, well, I can. I can look up at chat, but I can't read it. Seven. And I can't read it, not because I've suddenly gone illiterate, but because. Um, can't really focus with these. I, these don't allow a focus at the distance of the chat screen. Eight. Even dozen, even dozen teeth in the upper jaw of the shark. How about that? And on the bottom, count those two. Ooh, tiny teeth here, little tiny one. This one's even smaller, too. But it's there, so it will get painted and counted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's 12 down here. Thanks to these tiny little, you can barely even see them, teeth. 11 and 12. You probably are noticing that I'm painting the fronts and tops of the teeth. I'm not painting the backs of the teeth. Okay. As a consequence, if you were like eaten by this shark, somehow got inside of its mouth, if that were to happen, um, if that were to happen, you would you would notice the flaw in the painting in that you would be inside the mouth and you would say, the backs of these teeth aren't painted. Should I be filled with dread or should I be joyful? Are unpainted teeth, like, were they too soft maybe? So that um, they wouldn't bite very hard? I don't know. But you wouldn't notice that unless you were inside the shark's mouth, in which case you'd probably, you know, maybe not be terribly concerned about whether or not uh, the teeth were painted. Even though it's just pretend. So you, as like somebody watching this stream, okay, almost certainly are, are much too large to get in the mouth.
Why would there be battle scars? You know, the way the shading is going to work on this, because I'm not good at it. Zoria on Sewell, Nicole, really is the one. Wow, this isn't coming clean. Um, the ivory paint is refusing to come out of this brush. But there would there it might end up looking like there's battle scars on the shark just because the shading, the attempt to shade the shark worked out very badly. And it's just all mottled and crappy looking and just ugly and all of that. And so the backstory could be that um, Thank you, who? Yeah, it may or may not look like it has battle scars. A lot of that depends. Um, a lot of that depends on how what what happens when I start putting uh, dark gray wash on this thing. What will most likely happen is I will wish that I hadn't tried it, and then I'll let it dry and then paint it all gray again, and it'll just look like this. Oh, but the venom. So yeah, the more I think about it, the more, the more the demon toad is going to be uh, speed painted red and orange. I'll have to look to see. I think I got red and yellow. I'm not sure there's an orange. There might be. And then I'm going. All of those spikes on the top are are going to be flames. know if I should be like happy or just really disturbed that I brought the demon frog, the demon toad. Um, I guess it's a frog now because you said so. If the audience says it's a frog, then it's a frog. So the demon frog and the shark, it's kind of maybe it was a mistake to have them meet each other. At least so early. Okay. Well, this is fearsome now. It can do the dum dum thing again. Look at you now that the shark teeth are all painted and the mouth is all red and stuff. Dum 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 dum. How many times can I do this in one stream? Is there a limit? Dum 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 dum. That's good. You are. That was con total consumption of the audience there. Okay. This is where I'm going to use the accidental technique to try to make these look like gills. And we'll see if it works. So this will either be really cool, you know, and and make the gills look very realistic, or it'll just look, or it won't. Okay, I'm kind of hoping for the it will, but we'll see. So I just want to brush lightly over these.
it came out not too bad. I think it would be a little better than that, but it's not it's not too bad. It's pretty close to what I was hoping to accomplish. And we'll see what happens on the other side. Yeah, I think that's okay. That looks like that's pretty gill slitty. Okay. So there. Um, now. Now I have run out of excuses and I need to begin working on the shading. And I think I'm just going to keep using this big brush, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try the sort of like dry brushing technique. Um, with I, especially with the wash, cause it, um, just a tiny bit on the brush is enough to tiny bit on the brush is enough. So what color should its eyes be? I mean, real shark eyes are just uh, just black, right? Shiny black, but. Maybe I'll just do that, you know, if this shading works out kind of okay. And I just uh, make shiny black eyes. I have some glossy black paint. Well, as I'm doing this, I'm just reminding myself that I can always just paint it gray again. I really wish I were better at the shading stuff, highlighting and shading, but just don't have the techniques. That, even when they're demonstrated to me, I can't really pull it off. I don't know. That's why I should be limited to like painting pink hats on badgers, you know, that kind of thing. I'm just going to put one dot in there. Start with the fin. I want it darker. I think it should not traditionally, but a shark gets lighter on the tip and then darker near the base. But I'm going to try to, I'm going to do it the other way because there's actually a thing like a black tip shark with a
I have no idea what this is gonna how this is turning out. I'm thinking it's not looking very good. This weird kind of stripey effect. I wonder if that's okay. Dr. Pumpkins, thanks for rating. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. This is the shading stuff. You know, doing shading just is something that I'm good at. I'm just trying different different things to try to give oh the spotty stuff this doing kind of the spotty thing that's a this is this isn't too bad it's giving it kind of an interesting texture huh and that was another accident we'll see how this looks as it dries Yes, this is a land shark. It didn't start out to being a land shark, but somebody traded in naming points and it has become a land shark. It is Landrus Maximus of Sharkandia. That's its name. And so, although I was getting all ready to um, paint this like pearlescent blue and white, that isn't how it's going to go. This, on the other hand, this thing this like I've given up so I might as well just try this um, has actually turned out to look kind of okay hi thanks for the raid um, I can't read the screen even without even though it's a big print because there we go ea sports 137 hi thanks for joining in i am painting a shark that has become because somebody cashed in a bunch of points you can get points somehow on the stream that you can cash in to tell people to hydrate or to, if you cash in a bunch of them, allows you to name a thing that's being painted. Okay. 
And thanks for following. I appreciate that. That's really cool. And, um, yeah, shy guy, uh, cashed in enough points to name this the Landris Maximus of Sharkandia. And because it's Landris, it is going to be a land shark, which means that all this down here is going to be painted like grass. It's going to be a, a grassy field and it's erupting. The shark is erupting from it. So I'll be painting that kind of brown. But this kind of stippling technique that I just accidentally used out of frustration because nothing else was working um, doesn't look too bad. Thanks for joining. And since we have a new follower, and I'm waiting for this to dry to see how it turns out, I'm going to talk a little bit about Dyson Dungeons. Dyson Dungeons is a group of friends and relatives who got together over a year ago to start playing a Dungeons and Dragons campaign in a world that was created by our dungeon mistress, Alexis. And we still do that. It is streamed three Sundays a month. It just went out this last Sunday um, with a live chat. And you can catch older episodes, and there are a lot of them now, on YouTube, or you can listen to them as a podcast. And I think they are... Anyway, there's a combination of just a lot of fun, because we have a good time doing this. We hunt pretzels and sometimes croissants often it's food quite food oriented sometimes sometimes we get into combat and lately have they've been dangerous combats and my character who is a furbog fighter um uh, apparently seems to want to to get killed lately it's been mostly dead a couple of times so this kind of a combination of Oh, we do retail shopping, we do food uh, hunting, we uh, do dungeon crawls, and so on. It's it's hard to describe unless you really listen to it. It's not a typical D and D campaign in that it's not all combat based. Although there is a fair amount of dangerous combat, we are in a sewer at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, we, we spend more time in sewers than anything else, sometimes in warehouses or in uh, stone buildings. We've done that a couple of times. And again, my character gets mostly dead. And Nines, who is a tabaxi bard, frequently saves us through crowd control. Crowd control turns out to be a very important thing. Um, yeah. So that's how we started, and we still do that three Sundays a month with live chat, and then you can catch it later on YouTube or as a podcast. I am going to take out the tiny little pen here and do the nostrils. And this thing, Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons, started because we got 3D printers like the ones behind me and started printing dungeon tiles for use in our stream. And the decision was made by someone other than me that if we were going to go through all the trouble of painting these, why not stream the painting? And so that's how this happened. And so most of the things that you'll see and relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, which is on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays almost all the time, between more or less 10 to more or less 2, is the painting of mini figs and dungeon tiles that would be used in our campaign. And that's how, that's, that's how this thing got started, uh, by that, <laughs> by being the place where we paint these things. I don't know if I should mess around with this much more. I think that looks, it kind of looks uh, not, it looks okay. You know, 
It, and what I go for, since I'm not very skilled at painting at all, is I go for adequately. So this shark is Landris Maximus is getting painted adequately. I'm going to try to do its beady little eyes now. I decided I will actually do those in glossy black. I need to. Re We've got three blacks, four blacks actually, and one of them is shiny. Ooh, I could do metallic. I actually could do that. Okay, I am. This is this is a thing. Um, this shark is going to have a steely gaze because I am actually going to use the metallic steel paint for its eyeballs. Got its nostrils there, and I just just get a little bit. I'm going to give it a steely gaze by using steel metallic paint for its eyes. Yeah, you need to, you should just get onto YouTube. You can go all the way back to episode one and catch up to where we are now. Um, yeah, always the hardest part is finding it. There it is. So yeah, I've been painting dungeon tiles and minifigs, many of which end up appearing in our campaign, usually as adversaries. Sometimes they'll show up in our warm-ups. We do improv warm-ups before each session, and those are available as an exclusive feature for those who have become patrons on patreon.com. This one, sorry, I'm just seeing some bits here that just, they're just not looking right. There's some, you know, an asymmetry that just, not that this is beautifully done or anything, but it's just like, ugh, really. And I think what I'm going to do is like I did with the eyeball. It's a spot right there. It's just like jumping out at me saying this needs to be gone. And now it is. Now I can relax because I have an out, out damn spot. That was, yeah. Shouldn't have done that. But I think that Shakespeare has been dead long enough that there's no copyright on that anymore. So I think I'm safe with that. Um, <coughs> yeah, the steel paint. Go back, try to remember what I was doing. So as soon as I paint these beady little eyeballs, um, they've, uh, I often, at least once every stream, do a demonstration of the uh, dungeon tiles that we use that have been created by our DM, Alexis, and painted by either uh, Nicole or by me. Okay, I'm going to put these back on. I'm going to try to um, get the steely gaze eyeball paint actually on the eyeballs of the shark, which are really quite well defined here. But given the who knows how... Steady my hand will be. So yeah, we started painting the uh, dungeon tiles for our D&D &D campaign. 
And that's how relaxing painting got started, because we started just streaming what we were doing. And as you can see, we've invested heavily in the uh, in the studio here by like cutting out pieces of cardboard and putting them on the workbench. To the the workbench itself is painted a dark gray. It used to be painted light gray. And that didn't show up on camera very well, so then we painted it dark gray. And that isn't showing up on camera very well, so now um, now you get cardboard. Okay, that, I actually pulled that off. That's pretty cool. I didn't make a mess of it or anything. Usually, there's at least one OO, -oh, sometimes more than one OO, -oh, during this stream where I bump into something or knock something over or smash the brush into a spot. So far, there hasn't been one, but I'm sure that there's there's still plenty of opportunity for that. Okay. So the, this is this has been named Landris Maximus by um, medicinal shy guys. So this is a land shark, and it's bursting out of a grassy field. So all of this, which would have been white splashy water, is now going to be dirt. And all of this, which would have been nice blue ripply water, is going to be grass. And there's a lot of texture in here, so I'm going to I'm going to paint the the dirt first because I have to get down into around the shark, okay, without getting onto it too terribly much. I'm going to paint this part, the dirt part that's splashing out. It's basically just the inside, okay, because the outside is is still part of the grass that got folded over. So I'll get the paint, the dirt painted first, and then I'm going to paint everything else light green and give it a green wash, and I hope that that turns out okay. What color should I paint the dirt? I've got a whole bunch of different brown colors. <laughs> Beastie Brown? I haven't used that very much. <coughs> like the red brown, the flat brown might be okay. And I'm going to try, I haven't used the beast, I'm going to use a color I haven't used very much. Um, and I'm going to use it if I can find it. Part of what I'm doing here is wasting more time. If I'm, if I'm spending time looking for paint, then I can't use it, so I'm not painting. Do I actually have it out? Have I ever used it before? Yeah, just, just when I finally decide it's the color I want to use, I can't find it. Well, it's not like I don't have any other colors that I can use. Um, <clears throat> I could use like a lighter brown and then use this a brown wash on it. But I was kind of, you know, looking forward to doing something novel, like using a color I hadn't used before. There it is. It wasn't with the browns at all. And... Oh, this is cool. When it, when paint sits around for a good long time without being used, okay, uh, the pigment separates. So the other thing I get to do now is spend a lot of time mixing this. I know who really likes this part, especially if I can get the 
There we go. If I can get it like that. So yeah, we started producing these dungeon tiles, and the dungeon tiles are really pretty amazing. Um, they uh, are, you know, I'll just waste more time. I'll show them to you. This is always, at least once every stream, I get to show these off. These are not fully painted because they're not washed yet, so they're kind of flat looking. We usually put a dark gray wash on it to make them look a little more dungeony. Um, but these are printed as one solid piece, wall and floor, okay? Which means that uh, it's very solid. You can drop, well, I wouldn't recommend dropping these, but as long as the plastic itself doesn't break and the PLA is pretty strong, um, yeah, it works and, and the walls are all 90 degree angles and they all line up really nicely and all of that. But the best part is that under these plates are ball magnets, tiny little magnet balls in each corner. There's two in each corner so that when uh, you put them next to each other, the magnets rotate in their little wells and attach to each other. So I know that there are some tiles out there that claim to be magnetized. But that means there's a magnet in the base and you have to put them on a surface like a baking pan or something, which is the cheapest thing to do or else you can pay a whole lot of money for something that's a basic, basically a baking pan with some paint on it maybe. Not to disparage anybody else, but this is even cooler because they stick to each other and as you can see, they work on cardboard. And you can pull them apart easily and rearrange them any way you want. We've done that on our streams. So this is, we frequently paint large numbers of these and turn them into dungeons. And under, in the scroll underneath where I am on the screen, if you're watching, sometimes you'll see some of the smaller dungeons that we've done, like the necromancy layer and that kind of thing. Anyway, that's how relaxing painting started. Oh, that was that was an oops. It was just a minor oops because nothing broke. Um, if the shark had been, oh, the other thing that's way over there, that got all sorts of claws and horns and things on it, parts of it would have snapped off. But that went okay. So let me keep mixing this. So it's coming through the dirt. So the inside around the shark is going to be painted this dirt color. And then I might wash it a little bit later with a wash just to give it uh, some texture. And the rest will all be painted light green and then washed green. And I hope that comes out okay. So we'll use we'll put this paint here. Yeah, this is pretty ugly paint. It looked a lot better on the color chart. We'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm going to have to put my head magnifiers on again because I want it has to get down into this divot but not going up onto the shark. So I'll be using a small brush. And anyway, hopefully um, it will work out okay. A little bit. Uh, maybe I can use a little bit bigger brush than that. My fingers can pick up a brush. I'm going to start with this. We'll see how this goes. Did I fall silent again? And say attempt to get paint where I want it and not where I don't. It's always the biggest challenge. This brown paint will dry. Put the light green paint on the base coat. 
And then I am going to come by and put a wash on this because there's a lot of texture. Probably could have, I don't know, probably could have used speed paint on this. I didn't think of that in time. So I'll have to go with a wash instead to get the texture of the splitting open earth here. What's happening is the land shark, Landris Maximus, is emerging from the grassy fields. Is it Landris Maximus probably has like a tragic backstory that would explain why this is happening. But earlier in the stream, um, it was it was noted that Landris Maximus was was banished from the seas by Sturmgrimmy. Sturmgrimmy is our friendly sea monster. I'm not really sure what what it is as a character. It's just Sturmgrimmy. Who emerged from Lake Sturmgrim in one of the very early episodes of, of the D&D campaign. Okay. And the Sturm Grimmy has become a very important recurring you know, NPC character in our campaign. So if you want to learn more about Sturm Grimmy, you need to go back to some of the early episodes where we hung out around Lake Sturm Grimm. able to prove that Sturm Grimmy was not just a tourist trap legend. Huge breakthrough. Everybody involved. This is going a little more slowly with a little more difficulty than I was imagining at first, but it's coming along. But I'll, I definitely need to do a wash on it. And I'm thinking I might use, instead of just a dark brown wash, I might use this. We use wood. It's persistently calling. Sometimes, sometimes I foolishly spend more time on places that can't be seen. I mean, there's no way you're going to be able to see underneath here unless the shark was like totally upended or something, or if the camera got down way to the bottom, you wouldn't be able to see under there at all. So why am I taking so much time? I don't know. So what, um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah, it's coming along, getting the paint dabbed in there. Haven't had a big oops moment yet. I shouldn't say that. That almost certainly. Ago. I know we were talking about this and it never happened. And that is, there's a stream deck here that has given me big buttons with clear labels on them, like start stream. Okay. And I, I push that 
first because that's the, the start of things. I think I'm actually being dissed. You know, it's like, oh, you have to have large, large buttons with clear printing. But sort of smartphones for old people like me. Well lit large buttons. You can see the numbers. Anyway, I've got one that says, you know, start stream, and there's one that says start break. And then it's very clever. It says start break on it. And then the the words on it change from start break to end break. So I get to push the same button. But it means two different things, depending on whether the break has not yet started or whether it's about to end. But even though it's the same button, I don't get confused because it just has a different label on it. Isn't that amazing? Or is that just kind of insulting? I am not sure. But it works so, you know, whatever. Who am I to say? Yeah. Reasonable accommodation, yeah. Or un, in this case, almost unreasonable accommodation. This is a good deal oranger brown than it looked like on the color chart. But it'll, I'm hoping it'll look okay once it's washed. No, it just looks kind of, it doesn't look all that great. So that's it erupting from the earth. Okay, I hope Shy Guy is satisfied with that. And then uh, the rest of this is the, is the broken field. So this will be pretty straightforward to paint. I just need to get a whole lot of green paint on it. Come back, like I said, and... Uh, Put some wash on the erupting earth so it looks a little bit less boring, a little bit less uniform. And it'll give it a darker color too, because I should have, should not have trusted my color chart. Like I said, it's coming out a lot more orange than I thought it would. Okay. Um, Paint the rest of that light green with a wash. I want it a light color. Um, for our sewer tiles, I actually just would use a wash on that. But it's it's a grassy field, so I think I'll I will put a base coat on it of the light green. I think it's easier that way. This color, if you watch Submarine Wednesdays, you would recognize this as the color of the of some of the bulkheads. I was using it on this last Wednesday, painting around amazingly fine detail on the bulkheads of the submarine, including the forward torpedo room bulkhead, which if it still looks okay and doesn't need too much touch up, I would be able to install into the submarine, finishing this, the uh, forward torpedo room after a long time. It'll actually make it look like something's being done. And it, I'm also going to have to be using this on a couple other bulkheads that I didn't have time to finish on Wednesday. Sometimes things for me just take a really long time. Okay, um, I'm going to be painting the edges. So, what I really want to do, I hope this holds. So, I'm going to be putting this on this little sticky tack holder. 
It's pretty heavy. Just push down on it pretty hard. Oh, and I didn't snap anything. That was good. So, what I was saying before I started digressing, which I often do on relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, is digress off into all sorts of things, is um, that because with some regularity, something goes wrong. I know this looks really bright green, but don't worry. The uh, don't worry. The wash is not bright green. It's kind of an olive green. And in combination with this as the undercoat, will look pretty, pretty good. At least that's what I'm hoping for. As it is, it's not, it's not a very good grass field color at all. But I, the wash will make it look quite different. And I hope the final effect will be that it looks like Landris Maximus is bursting up through a grassy field. Make rendezvous with its new friend, the Demon Frog. The Demon Frog has not been named yet. So those of you who have points, you care to redeem them, you could redeem them to name the demon frog because it's possible to use those points to name a thing that's being painted. Yep, that's one of the features of relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Everything has to have points. You have to be, you can't have anything nowadays without a way of accumulating points. Even if you're not sure what they are. So when I boot up my computer, I'm not even, I don't pay attention to it because I'm not at all interested, but there's this little pop up. It says points with an exclamation point. Click here to redeem them. It doesn't say anything about what what their points from, you know, getting more points for nothing. There's just there's no information other than points. So I know that if I click on it, let's just say it probably isn't a good thing. Anything that pops up that just you know, without giving you any other information other than that, you get points. I'm just suspicious of that. Okay, so both the brown and the green look pretty, you know, they're not really great, right, by themselves. But I'm going to put some wash on the brown and then definitely wash on the green. And especially the green is going to change in character pretty significantly once it's washed. Um, oh yeah, this is all. Um, this is definitely going to fall. So put it over there where I'm less likely to knock it over. So oh yeah, all of the digressions were about buttons, and I got up to you know the talking about the different labels on the buttons and everything. Um, you know to try to accommodate my dotteriness. I guess. Thank you. For putting very few, very simple buttons on so my dotteriness uh, doesn't interfere with how well the, the stream is going. Um, yeah. What, I, what we talked about getting was an OO -oh button. Maybe even two OO -oh buttons. A little OO -oh button for little things, you know, like um, squeezing out too much paint or 
something like that. And a major OO button for big OOs, which can happen. Like when I knocked over one of the models and busted off the, the sword and the hilt and I had to make new ones. Um, yeah, so that's where I was going when I started talking about buttons a long time ago. Steely-eyed gaze. The steely eye gaze worked out okay. The steel paint is a little shiny. It's dark. Yeah, not too bad. The gill slits look pretty decent. Okay, I need to put a wash on this brown because it doesn't look good as it is. And I'm going, I am going to use the smoky ink. I used up this entire palette. I don't know. Even have double colors in one of them. No idea that this shark would take so many colors. Weird. So I'm just going to put it in the middle here. And yeah, put these back on again so I can see where I'm putting it so it doesn't get all over everything. have to wait until after break to put the wash on the grass because it's just not it's not drying yet and I could put the wash on while it's still wet but I don't sometimes that works really well and sometimes it just is yucky It's getting way, way down near the bottom of the bottle. And so usually the washes are really very thin. But when they get down near the bottom, they tend to thicken up. There's the ratio of, uh, yeah, that's definitely still wet. Try not to stick your fingers in it. Three, 
I'm going to finish talking about the OO button and then uh, don't have anything else to say about that. Oh, oh, let me. Maybe someday, maybe someday I'll get my OO -oh buttons. And then when something, you know, bad happens, you know, paint spills or. breaking things or whatever, then I'll be able to push that button. Instead of just going, ugh, really, oh, I can push the button and I have maybe a cute graphic pop up and some dramatic sound effect. Something not copyrighted, like, <laughs> You know, that would be kind of fun. That could be for a, like a little uh oh, oh. Something more dramatic for a big oh oh. Okay, well. It looks a lot better with the wash on it. And there's this kind of little ring of lighter brown around around the edges, but rather than try to fill that in, I think it just helps define it a little better. And then, as always, when I look at things through the head magnifier, there's chunks chunks that aren't painted green so let me touch those up let me just use this brush because it seems to be fairly clean um, i'm going to touch those up and then let this let the green paint dry during break here Get painted. This dry. Break and then come back and put the green wash on the grass, and I think you will like how that turns out. And then Land Shark, Landris Maximus, will be done. And I will then have no choice but to start working on the demon frog. There, stuck my finger. You can tell I stuck my finger there because it's. Okay, I, we really need to play that out, no matter how disturbing it is. So I guess before break. Off and turn off the light. So before break, what, what happens here is um, is this, as Medicinal Shy Guy says, Sturmgrave goes, So, you have been terrorizing the sea. I don't know what Sturmgrave's voice sounds like. You are hereby banished to the land, and Sturmgrave being magical, 
does something magical to the to the shark, boom, you know, magic stuff like a sea serpent would, a sea monster would do to a shark. <laughs> and not really knowing what's happening, the the shark Landris, now Landris Maximus, bursts up through a grassy plain, gasping for breath, I guess, not really knowing what's happening, but you know, bursting out. Dum, 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 dum. Am I on this green stuff instead of, oh, maybe it's algae. I don't know. No, it doesn't feel like algae. It's really, this is much harder than algae should be. I'm really hungry, though, and so I will devour the first thing I see. And the first thing I see is the first thing that uh, your painter was able to reach, which was the saxophone playing badger. <laughs> Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, yeah, that was metallic. Mm, ooh, I like that hat. That hat was very tasty. But, yeah, was caught unawares and devoured, and, and the saxophone solo was abruptly ended, just like it was in 1984. But the demon frog goes, huh, What was that? What has emerged? Oh, Wow, something has emerged through my up from my grassy plain. What could this possibly be? Hello, what are you and why are you in my grassy plain? I am Landris Maximus, and I am now a land shark because Sturmgrimmy has banished me from the sea. Oh, you used to live in the sea, hmm? I've seen the sea. Oh, yes, the sea is very wet and deep and, and watery. Yes, that was my experience as well, even though I only went in up to my knees. Well, now I am on land, and I am Landris Maximus. What are you? I am a demon frog. Do you have a name? No, not yet. Nobody has cashed in 10,000 viewing points to give me a name yet, so I will remain nameless. Oh, that is too bad. I am Landris Maximus of Sharkandia. When you get a name, introduce yourself again. I will definitely do that. There. That was disturbing, I'm sure. But uh, this green paint is still wet. You can see some shininess to it, so I don't want to put the, the uh, wash on it yet. And it's break time anyway. So I'm going to take a break and then come back and finish Landris Maximus of Sharkandia um, by making this bright green, by the, this bright green plane look uh, less bright, but still green. And I will see you probably a little after 1230, since it's already 10 after 12. Uh, usually take 25 half a min minutes or a half hour. I'll probably do that. Here, let's, I would leave this on the cardboard so you could see it, but it's it's not stable. So I'm putting it over to the side. Anyway, break time. Uh, I'll be back a little after 1230. There we are back again. I washed out the palette, so now I have wells for paint. And we'll move this back here. It's mostly dry. Dry enough to get this right back. What a shock. <coughs> I don't know what it is. You know, whenever I take a break, I come back. And it's like my nose starts dripping again. So maybe, maybe I'm allergic to a break. Maybe I'm allergic to coming back to work. So yeah, I'm sorry the shark isn't on uh, screen right now. But if I put it on here, it's going to fall over, and that would be not good.
So let's see if we can get this on screen. I'm just going to be putting gray green, dark green wash all over this, and it's going to make it look a little yellower, and it's going to fill in all these little ripples and stuff, and hopefully it'll look good. We'll find out. changes color pretty nicely and uh, it's going out has to go on pretty heavily because I wanted to get into all these ripples so um, I actually need to squeeze out quite a bit more I wonder if we have another bottle of this somewhere this wash is used very successfully on our sewer dungeon tiles the sewer dungeon tiles were base coated in gray. And then when this was put on it, um, it looked really, it just looked real sewery. It was very effective. Made it look all mossy and gross. Now I squeezed out too much this time. No. No mid-perfect compromise, it looks like. Huh? Either there's too much in the well or not enough. But, um, yeah, I wanted it on pretty heavily because I wanted it to get into all these ripples. And then I'll do around the edge. But the color is a lot better. You can see that once it's on the base coat of the green, um, it looks more like grass and less like whatever that was before. <laughs> less like um, the <coughs> bulkheads in the submarine, which were done that color. So that gets to dry for a good long time because um, that kind of puddled up pretty deep in some of those depressions. It probably won't be dry until, I don't know, later tonight. Um, and I guess I'm going to end up leaving it on the stand. And we'll say, say, uh, Arriva Derchi to Landris Maximus of Sharkandia at the moment. And I'll put that way over there and bring out this um <coughs> so what what will happen with demon frog here let's see what colors they've got and speed paints here not purple mm, that might be helpful for some things um yellow I know there's a red one here. Yeah, blood red, blood red. So we got uh, green, and whatever that is, some sort of brown, I think. Orange, for your giant orange. So I think I'm going to make the top of it red. And then um, orange, and then I, I might paint parts of it yellow. wonder if I should work from the bottom up with a lighter color, like yellow on the toes and stuff, and then do some orange and then some red. And try that. If it doesn't work, um, these have a tendency to like dissolve in for other coats of paint, and um, 
<coughs> bleed through. So if this all doesn't work, what I may end up having to do at some point is just put a couple coats of primer back on or just toss the guy away and start over with a new one. It's always that too. But I think I am going to make like the toes and the and the belly. This is going to look like a flame with yellow and then orange and then red. And and we'll just see see how this works. I'm not real adept at this, so it might turn out looking pretty cool, or it might just look pretty awful. I'm not sure. Hey, what up? So if this starts going very badly, I'll just get frustrated in the, in the stream, you know? We'll see. Let's see what happens. We'll see if this turns into, like, just a big oops event. I was talking about having an oops button. This might be one of those where it's kind of like, this is a big oops. Not like the big whoop, you know? A big whoop is a totally different thing. This would just be a big oops. Sniffles. sniffles and sniffles are yep, working today. And if these kind of bleed into each other later, um, that would actually be okay, because I want the transitions from like one color to the next to be, you know, a little inconsistent. Okay, well, that's yellow. And I'm guessing the orange is a little darker. I know the red is quite dark. And the red will be primarily just up and around, like just the top here.
she painted something. There's paint on it. So, um, yeah, the next one is orange. And when I've done campfires, it's been the same sort of thing. It's yellow, orange, red. You know, when you move up from the really hot flames that are lighter to the darker kinds of things. Definitely darker than the yellow. See what it looks like once this goes on. Time to put this on a stand, I think. A pretty decent color. Being kind of heavy on the top here. I wanted to uh, to uh, catch the texture of the scaliness, you know. It's blending in pretty well with the yellow. Kind of the face in this color. And reserve the red kind of right along the top. It might make the eyes, it might make the eyes glossy red. I do have a glossy red one.
That's starting to look pretty demony. Don't you think? I think it's coming along okay. And then we'll use the red, which is really quite dark, mainly inside these and maybe just bleeding over a little bit in some other areas. None of this is, I mean, how many demon frogs have you seen? So you don't know if I'm getting it right or not, do you? This might be like the epitome of the perfection of demon frog at now. We don't know. Thing you can say about these speed paints is they are speedy. And they've done a pretty good job of picking up the scaliness of the skin. The downside is I really need to let it dry pretty thoroughly before I start painting the flames, the flame spikes, because this stuff does, does, it does, it melts back. I'm going to be able to do the nostrils. I think I can do those. I'll just do those in, I think I'll do those in gray. I don't want them to be real black, but I want them to be dark. And the eyeballs will definitely be um, glossy red. And all these little spikes, these little spikes all over the place are uh, flames. Like that. I think this came out okay. Let me just clean this off and I can show it to you. There's a few places 
I like the orange to be a little more orangey. The tops of the legs, kind of, you know. Yeah, don't mess with it too much, though. There's always that. Just one more thing. Well, one thing painted and another thing started. At least there's that, right? So the, the flames, what I was thinking of doing with the flames is we've got these pearlescent paints. And the pearlescent paints I was going to use for the water on the land shark when it was a water shark and not a land shark, but then it became a land shark. But I'm thinking these, um, the flames... I'm going to paint, I think I'm going to paint a base coat of yellow on them. And then I've got this pearlescent orange and red copper that could be like the tips of the flames and they'll be, they'll be shiny. Okay. Shiny would be good. Um, yellow will be kind of a flat color but I think would serve as a decent base coat for the pearlescents, which are, the pearlescents are kind of like the speed paint in that it's translucent. <laughs> okay, it doesn't cover that well. It, um, you can, you know, you just, you have to use it like a wash almost. <laughs> Let me try to do some of these detail things on the face. <clears throat> I'm going to get out this um, this dark gray color for the nostrils because instead of making them totally black, I think they'll look better if they were just a dark gray. I was thinking I might want to use the felt tip pen to do it, but I think I think I can, man. But if I mess up on it, I can't rep I can't paint over. So I I am just going to they are they're not what I was planning. They're going to be something else. They're going to be the felt tip pen, and I'm going to try to do it really carefully. It's like I said, unlike with many of the other paints, with the speed paint, can't really can't really repaint it. There. I mean, it's, it's just sort of colored in a little bit just so you can see them. Um, the eyeballs, eyeballs red, it's glossy red. I haven't used this in a million years. Is this the same? This is glossy red. Take another break here. We got 
something going on upstairs, and I just want to check on it. Um, I'll be back in just a little bit. I'm back and I'm hydrating. I guess things are pretty much under control. The dogs just, sometimes they see things and decide that they really need to bark on them. Okay. Give this a good stir. This has been sitting for a long time without being used. Hope it's still okay. It's been sealed. Sometimes when it's <laughs> sometimes it's getting the cap off. So when I was trying to do when I was on submarine Wednesday last week and I wanted to paint something green, and I couldn't get the cap off the paint. So <laughs> after the stream, I ended up spending some time, <laughs> a fair amount of time. Just cleaning the bottle cap so that the cap would go on and off. That was fun, wasn't it? Listening to that. Uh, so it has a little demon eyes, right? Big demon eyes. And we're going to paint it glossy red. I'm going to paint it glossy red. I don't know why I keep saying it in plural. <clears throat> Doing that, saying things in plural rather than singular. I didn't really tend to do that, but anyway, that's what happens sometimes when you're talking when I'm talking. Well, pretty clear that this hasn't been used because it's full. I think, I think I've used it to paint like a gemstone on something once. This frog has very large demon eyes. Getting weird double vision today with these things. Well, there's one glossy red demon eye. Let's see if I can get one on the other side.
Okay. <laughs> now we have glossy red demon eyes on the demon frog. <clears throat> Next step is to get some sort of yellow paint on the uh, flamey horns, the flamey spikes. I have several different yellows. Let me look at the color chart again and see what we've got. We've got just yellow. And since I'm going to be putting, and I've also got like sun. <coughs> These are all different colors. I've got sun yellow, which is kind of a nice glossy color. It's a little translucent, but that might be okay. Deep yellow. <clears throat> Even lemon yellow. Yeah. thinking maybe this is a little glossy is that the sun yellow might work pretty well this is the color i've used for the flames when i've painted campfires and flame traps the deep yellow might be okay depending on which of these i use Yeah, let's, let's go with the sun yellow. See if I can find it. I'm going to be using a number of little brushes here because I have to get, there's some of those that are pretty tiny. On yellow. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to use. This is pretty well separated. This is going to require a good deal of stirring up. Significant flaw there. Mm -hmm. I kept seeing it. It wasn't until I put my head magnifiers on that it became obvious that a little bit, a little bit of its chin was never painted. And then the same thing sort of true of the upper lip here. Tiny little bits of touch up. It stays liquid for a long time. And these were just bits that were right on the face, so they're going to show. So I definitely wanted to catch those.
The demon eyes, I think, are looking okay. I think that's looking decent. And the lip. It's actually... The texture is different there because it uh, there's like a little divot in the print. But at least it's got paint on it. Continue stirring this. Yeah, it moved off frame, didn't it? Everything just moved off. I think to, maybe I should just need to slide over the camera. There we go. Better. What I'm doing, going to do here is put this yellow paint on the flamey spikes. And then I'm going to be using um, pearlescent paints to highlight them so that they look glossy, you know, like shiny, flamey stuff. Okay, so we'll just see how this goes. See how this goes like everything else. We're seeing how it goes. Sometimes it's been going okay, and sometimes not. Could have used an oops button a little while ago, but... Oh, well. Didn't... Still don't have one. These are going to look kind of weird being painted yellow like this, but they are to be um, covered in other colors. These are going to take forever to paint. Mm -hmm. I think what I what I'm going to end up doing here is as I'm rotating this instead of doing one at a time, I'm going to do them in you know in the orientation that they're in. See what I mean? Speed paints bleed through. Which will be okay here. I mean, it'll just be part of the effect. It'll be a feature, not a flaw. I might come back and put another coat on. I'm not sure. Definitely a lot of these. been counting them like I did with the teeth, right? I can go back and count them when I do the other orientations. 
Okay, so that's just like on one side. I've got to <laughs> keep rotating this. So I'll paint this side and then come back and do the... Uh, some backs. Because even though, <laughs> you know, this going around like this should paint them the way around, it frequently misses some... Um, this is little bits of them. Yeah, I'm mostly on camera. <clears throat> That's a success. And up to there, and this one in the middle. <clears throat> it's doing counting numbers. Zoria Ansu would appreciate that doing numbers. Our changeling druid in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign is notoriously not newer phobic, but maybe not always. Uh, precise with the use of numbers. It's the right word for that. That's the word I just used. So there. Okay, and we're going to go back and do the backs of these. Yeah, see this. Look at how the speed paints just just bled right into it. Made the yellow go away. It's the thing I found about them is that you can't, it's hard to paint over them because the paint dissolves the paint. This yellow has to go on really thick in order to uh, provide a uniform coat, which means that it's going to take a, quite a while to dry. I'll be able to do the, uh, the pearlescent paints on these or not. Eventually I will, but I'm not sure I'll be able to do them today. Those is, you know, things, paint drying or not. Okay, after I get this one glued on, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of glopping it on here. I'm going to have to, and, and I get, get down along the front here. We end up just living with the way the uh, red speed paints are bleeding into it. It might just be the way it is. It 
end up having to be the way they look. And I'll still use the pearlescence on them. Still want to do that. I'd just be doing like copper tips. We'll see how this looks when it's when it dries. <clears throat> I started to say I need to clean the brush because it's the paint is building up on it in a not helpful way. Okay. Well, I stayed on camera. That's pretty decent. Oh, hi, old Brogger. Thanks for joining in. Well, thanks. Yeah, that kind of worked from the yellow to the orange to the red. I did that with the speed paints, and they they blend into each other pretty well. That was bad. I thought, okay, there's always the big oops, right? That was the big oops. So there was a spot that looked like it hadn't been painted. And uh, what I did was I managed to touch the orange paint, the yellow paint I'm painting with, and a huge mess of it. Oh, yeah, well, things were going okay, and then they stopped. Oh. Well, I guess, I don't know, I might have the old ones. Yeah, they probably aren't. So, um, so the newer ones, the reactivation ability means uh, dissolving in the paint underneath above it. Might have to invest in those. I mean, right now it's not bad. It's kind of bleeding in in a way that actually looks kind of cool, but. It wasn't what I was planning on, but that's okay. Sometimes, sometimes things work out anyway. So these spikes are supposed to be like flames. So I'm base coating them with this kind of um, gloss yellow. And when it dries eventually, which will take a while, I'll use some pearlescent paints and use the red copper and touch the tips of them so that they really kind of stand out. That headache goes away. Headaches are... I don't get them very often, but when I do, they are really an unpleasant thing. It's not what you can do to work around them either, right? I mean, like if you've got a sore arm or something, it's like, well, don't, you'll just let that arm rest and won't use it that much. Let it recover, but your head, you can't, can't get can't do much of anything without uh, using your head, so to speak. With these, whether it's a Tamiya or the Viejo, it doesn't matter which. The yellows, oranges, and whites all have the same issue of being it's the, it's not like they're too viscous. If you thin them, then they don't cover at all. 
but they're almost gel-like. Even, even the ones that are supposed to be flat, you know, in terms of flat color. This sort of gel-like consistency that um, just makes it really hard to get good coverage. And then putting on multiple coats because the paint, you know, if you put on something really thin, it's hard to get it so it's even, even coverage. I've been playing around with it, you know, trying to thin them a little bit, spreading really thin coats and recoating. And I haven't found the magic, the magic yet in terms of getting them to behave just right. I use them kind of sparingly because of that. Thing this is. Um, I use I tend to use my little finger to to support the painting while I'm doing this and that always leads to the danger of sticking it in wet paint not really realizing that yeah okay I need to stop real briefly get some of this red because there was a slip of the brush Yeah, that's what you end up doing too with the yellows. So you had the same issue. Man, I'm glad it's not just me. I mean, I'm I'm not glad that it's a that it's an issue, but I'm glad it's not just me with the issue. Uh, in the way I paint, because it really is. The, uh, the pigments just somehow uh, make them, like I said, gel-like almost. That's kind of what I found too, yeah, is the you need to thin them and then brush is get them as even as you can, you know, in terms of evenness of coat. And then end up, you end up coming back uh, with multiple coats. That probably, I mean, that's why the oranges are the same kind of issue is because They'll use the same, there, there's yellow in the background, right? The yellow pigments are mixed in with the redder ones to get the orange. But with the submarine model, 16 missile twos for the Poseidon missiles are painted yellow. And I decided I would, I'm just going to cheat. I bought some uh, yellow spray paint. Rather than trying to get the yellows that I've got thinned down just right for airbrushing and everything else, I just bought some yellow spray paint and I'm going to stick them on dowels so that I can get it even all around them. And I want to paint them that way. Especially since they're glossy. The, uh, the missile tubes are to be painted gloss yellow. Which is even harder sometimes. Ugh. 
Get it again. Just banged the, I banged the edge of the brush down there. You get some of the red speed paint out and cover it up. Yeah, so I decided I'm just going to do it. And I'm just going to cheat, kind of, and um, just spray paint it. So many spikes on this thing. Wow. It's like the never ending spikes of the demon frog. So, Braga, you missed. Huh, the, the demonic yellow, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's, I might try those. I mean, it would be, it would be nice to have a decent yellow paint. You know, and not have to be thinning and multiple coating and all sorts of other accommodations. Um, especially since a lot of what I end up doing is just little spots of paints, right? With all the uh, the mini figs. There's something out there, just even one yellow. I'm not even asking for multiple shades of yellow. So in this case, I'm not terribly worried because I'm going to be putting an overcoat of um, pearlescent paints on. So I'm just kind of using this as a base. Base color. Be hopefully nice, shiny, spiky fire horns. Yeah, I know it gets that can that feels like such a long time mixing up the paints. But they these these things really do need a lot of stirring to get it get the consistency right. I should not have saved the tiniest bits for last. I keep finding as I get as it hits gets near the end. Once it hits one thirty, okay, our time here, streaming time. Um, the accuracy of the placement of the paint begins to suffer. I start. That's a, just just a real fancy way of saying I start. Start missing the spots. Yeah, getting it on things where I don't want it. And so I have parent the little eyebrow spikes here, right? Tiny little eyebrow spikes. I managed to save those for the end.
sometimes I'm uh, everything near the end and it's happening today is getting a hand cramp the hand that I'm using to hold the holder <laughs> decided to uh, to cramp up on me yay Maybe what I should do is do relaxing painting from more or less 10 until more or less 1.30, and then uh, just do monologue. Maybe I should just limit myself to monologues from 1.30 until the end. Not that I don't tend to do that pretty much anyway, but... The hand cramps up. And paint starts slipping. Really need the oops button. Paint on the back here. I have to make a note about the uh, the yellow paints. Yellow. Demonic yellow would have been appropriate for this because this is a demon frog. Okay, well, they're kind of base coated. At least you can see where they are. There was one spot. Yeah, I have to fix it. Fix that where I got the uh, yellow paint. In a spot where I definitely didn't want it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Put that up with the uh, the red speed paint. Get the yellow out of here just enough to be able to do that. And then clean the brush and then I'll do a recap of what I accomplished today because I actually got something done today, which is kind of cool. Let me just get this. Okay. Um this in alcohol later. Take this off. So, I want to thank everybody who joined in this wonderful episode of Relaxing Painting with Dice and Dungeons. Um, earlier today, I finished the land shark. Why is it a land shark? It is a land shark because medicinal shy guy cashed in 10,000 points of some sort that they got from something, I don't know how or why, and decided that this couldn't be bursting out of the water. Nope, couldn't just be water with spray or anything. Nope, it needed to be a land shark. And so it is. Um, the backstory is that, what is that? Just weird, it's a flaw in the print. The backstory is that Sturmgrimmy, our faithful sea monster, uh, banished, banished the shark for a reason. Yep, <laughs> yeah, right into the campaign. Um, I was looking forward to this being in the water because I said my character on D&D &D would never go into water that was deep enough to hold the shark, and so I never needed to worry about it, but no. Now it's a land shark because Sturmgrimmy banished it to the land and it's bursting out of a green meadow, okay, going 
Why am I here? What is this all about? Oh, I hear my theme music. Dum, 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 dum. This is like the sixth time I've done this. It just doesn't get old. Everything's backward. There we go. Yeah, land shark. So this land shark, um, and if you read the, the chat, and I would recommend you not do that, uh, we find out that the land shark bursts through this, burst up through the um, grasslands here and met demon frog. And they have had uh, an interesting dialogue ever since. Hello, what are you? I am a shark. Why are you on land? I am a land shark. Why are you a land shark? Because somebody named me that. They spent 10,000 points of some sort. Where do you get points? I don't know. What happened? Well, they spent them, and now I am Landris Maximus of Sharkandia. It's written down, so it's official. Oh, well, I hope you like being a land shark. I don't know. I like being in the water. Do you like being in the water? Yes, I just said that. Okay, that kind of thing happened. Is the dialogue between the demon frog and the shark just uh, used up many, many, many minutes that could have been spent painting, but weren't. So the, the wash on here is still drying, but I think that looks okay. And now the land shark is officially a land shark. It has an official steely stare, because I use steel paint on the eyeballs, and uh, shark teeth. And what in the heck is that? Look at that under the chin. Oh my, okay. Well, that's something else to do. Something else to do is to fix the chin. Right at the right at the end, I looked at that, and there it is, a, a giant chin flaw. It's always important to do that, is uh, to, to rotate things in a way you hadn't before, so that this thing that no one could even see... I, obviously, what I did was I caught it with the... Uh, the green wash it was washing. Kind of felt like I had, but then I didn't see it right away. Now it's gone. The chin flaw is gone. So Land Shark got done. And that may or may not ever end up in our campaign. But now since it's on land, uh, we don't have to go into the water to encounter it. The demon frog, I don't know. Who knows what will happen with the demon frog, right? Anything could happen with the demon frog. Got an asymmetric chin. Look at that. Wonder if I should fix that. And it's sort of fixed. Um, anyway, I need to let these this yellow dry, which is going to take until probably Monday. Thanks for joining in, old Brogger. I hope that your head doesn't explode. <laughs> um, definitely don't use a head magnifier right now. But no, I hope your headache goes away soon. But thanks for joining in anyway. And uh, come back on Wednesday for Submarine Wednesday. Okay? We'll see you then. Uh, yeah, so there we have the land shark that I'm going to take off of this because otherwise it's going to get knocked over and would definitely be a problem. Put that there. And the demon frog, the demon frog, I'm actually going to paint the base the same way. Since they met on the grassy plain, since they met on the grassy plain, this will be painted with the same light green with the wash on it so that the, the two of them, when they meet up, will match. But I am going to, once the yellow dries, is uh, touch the tips of the yellow with the, um, with the pearlescent copper, just, just the tips of them. The, the way that the, the uh, speed paints have 
bled into the yellow, I think actually looks pretty decent. And, you know, and I'll see how it looks. I might just leave it the way it is. I might just not mess with the pearlescence and just leave it and see how it looks on Friday when I get back to painting Demon Frog. Why not? Um, and finishing that up and then moving on to the last one that I have been. Oh, thank you for following, Zeke. Uh, really appreciate that. Yay, Monday. Yep, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on Subwed, Submarine Wednesday, where we go back to painting the, the vintage Renwall cutaway submarine model that I've been working on for some time, starting to make some decent progress, getting to the point where I'm going to need to do some major fabrication to get pieces to fit. But on Wednesday, I'll be painting bulkheads in the end of... Uh, in the inside of the hull of the submarine in anticipation of that work that needs to be done. And what I have done is I piled up paints and brushes and yeah, it might take all day tomorrow uh, just cleaning up enough to be able to find the work surface for Wednesday. So say goodbye to Demon Frog. Goodbye, everybody. It was fun being a demon frog. I really enjoyed meeting Landris Maximus. Landris Maximus was very interesting addition to the land place thing. I better stop now. Okay, enough playing around with these. We'll see you on Submarine Wednesday. Thanks for all of you who joined in. Thanks for the new follows. Really appreciate that. Um, if you'd like, you can become a subscriber and where you could go to patreon.com slash Dyson Dungeons and become a patron. We will see you Wednesday, more or less at 10. Thanks.